Hey everyone, I want to talk about uh, step components. Specifically today I'm going to talk about the three spark or spark components, which are the trigger spark, the component spark, and then the parameter spark. All three of these are going to decide when something applies to a step. So in the case of this, it's going to decide when the trigger or when the um, notes on that step are applied. This, the component spark, is going to decide when the other step components, so these ones, are going to be applied to the step. And then this is going to decide when parameter locks or automation is going to be applied to a step. So let's talk about those values. They're all the same for them and they work really similarly, or actually the exact same. So I covered this before, but when I start a spark, the default value is going to be two. And that means it's going to play the second of every two. And I know that because one and two are lit up and two is flashing, which means one won't play and two will. Three through eight all follow uh, the same exact kind of pattern. So I press four once and it's not going to play one, two, three, but it will play four twice, one, but not two, three, four, three times, one, two, three, but not four. And then on the fourth time, it's not going to play one, but it will play two, three, four. Three through eight all work like that. Two is a little different just because all that you really have access to is two of every two or one of every two. And then one only does one of every two. Nine says apply this spark randomly. I don't really love that, but um, I definitely see some spots where somebody might want to use that. I'll cover the value zero later on. It's a little bit more complicated, but in the same video, I'll, I'll go over that because I think it's pretty important and very useful. First thing I want to talk about with them is that these don't affect each other. And the way I know that is, let's just show you a little test. First, I want to mention I've got the metronome on to count. And part of that is because I think it illustrates it a little bit better as it goes through and counts one, two, three, four, and you can hear when a step does and doesn't play. So sorry if that's annoying. I just find it kind of, I thought it would illustrate it pretty well. So what I'll start with is let's start with a component spark that'll happen every second time. And I'm going to make it tonality four. Actually, let's, let's start even easier. So let's just start here. One, two, three, four, one, two. Oops, it's because it already has that. So right now it's just playing every single time. If I add component spark two and tonality four, oh, let's take a, get rid of the component spark. So that's gonna add, make it a fifth higher. And so I want to do that every other time. So the way that I know that these don't affect each other is because if I add a trigger spark one, you might think that the first time it's triggered, it'll play the root, and then the second time it'll apply the step component and it will play the fifth, but instead we'll just hear the root. One, two, three, four. One, two, and that's because every four. time that the one, fifth is two, being played, three, four. One, it's two, not triggering it. Four. So my point there is that every single time that the sequencer arrives at one of these steps, it's going to increase the counter for each spark component for that step, no matter what. All right, so let's talk about how you would apply these to add some variety to a track. Let's go ahead and we'll add our C back there. I'm going to make the step count a little bit shorter just so that way it runs a bit faster. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I will first add a parameter spark one out of every four. And right now this is gonna do nothing because we don't have any parameter locks. And I can check that by pressing the step and hitting shift to go through each of these and see if any of these lights are on. None of them are, perfect. I'm going to add a delay send here. And again, you can jump through these pages and see what automation is set for a step or what parameter locks apply. So that means that on the first of every four times, it'll have the delay. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, let's say that we also will do our little, let's raise it a fifth every other time like we did before. So tonality four and one, step component two. two. Three, four. One, two going to add one last layer. I'm going to add a trigger spark. So it's going to play the note on that step on the first seven, but not the eight eighth time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So it kind of makes a little melody on its own, right? This is just going to be a really quick sneak peek. Um, if I add a jump, going to increase the step length. Um, actually, maybe that's fine. Okay, so I can fit that all in just two steps. One, two, three, four, one. Oops, let's actually put go bring it to eight, because that's where it was at before. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So kind of neat that you can fit all of that on just one to two steps. 
So beyond being able to add variety like that, we can also take advantage of the fact that you can skip or mute a, a trigger or a step using any of these three. Here's how you do that. So I'm just going to remove all the component sparks, parameter sparks, kind of reset this track to where it was a second ago. And what I will do here is I'm going to add, uh, we know that we know that the trigger spark is going to play one, two, three, but not four. So we know it's going to skip four, but what if we also wanted to skip one? There's two ways that we can do that. First is if I add this component spark to it and I have it set to one out of every four. So this time the one I'm muting is flashing because it's only applying the mute on the first time and it's not applying the step components the other three times. And the way that I'm going to mute it is with velocity nine. So that's mute. So now it's going to play on two and three only. One, two, three, four. Okay, perfect, right? But what if we, instead of having it mute, we wanted to use our step components to do something else. Like what if we wanted it to ramp up the whole time? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oops. <laughs> now we know why that's not uh, working how we might have expected. Let's have it ramp up uh, every other time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. The way that we're going to still have that mute, even with this additional step component, is by adding a parameter spark. That'll happen the first of every four times. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to change the volume, which is on the fourth page, fourth parameter page, to zero. And it's only going to apply that parameter lock, oops, the first of every four times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So that's another way of just kind of being able to use the overlap of them to mute things uh, selectively. I decided to split this up into kind of two parts. So this next part, I want to talk about value zero on the Spark components. So value zero solves a specific problem. That specific problem is if I want this note to play on the third of every four passes, oops, let me remove those. So I want it to play here and I want it to play here. One, two, three, four. One, two. But because it's not playing the first two passes, but it is playing the third. It's saying quiet, quiet, play, quiet, quiet, play. So it's landing on the two on that second measure. There is that step reset, that step counter reset button. And the thing about it is that it applies to all tracks. And because these don't affect each other, there's no way to make this only sometimes reset this step unless you're using some trickiness with jump. That's a different video. But now I've got it set to reset the trigger spark counter on all tracks on this pattern on the first of every four counts. So it should now be playing on three out of four and then uh, six out of eight, right? Yes, I think. One, two, three, four. One, two, seven out of eight. Three, four. Yeah, one, okay, so, but it's working. Three, four. One, one thing that doesn't work here four, one, two, is if you also want to reset four, anything one, else. Two, three, four. One, two, three, it just completely ignores all the resets. So that's one downside of this method, but I think it's still very, very useful because it's global and you're able to kind of start, uh, restart the counter at the beginning of each measure. So I recommend that you would do this on the longest track that you have, just because it's going to be probably the easiest to see where the measures start. So if I wanted this to instead have each one take up a, uh, half step, I could just add the sparks every other time. Now this does limit the other sparks that you can apply to this step, but I still find it pretty helpful. So this is just one way that you could expand those patterns and make it so it hits on the three of every four instead of every third, every third pass. And uh, I think that's all I'm going to cover for today. So really, I'm just getting started here and I have a lot that I want to share. So I'm actually looking for feedback. Uh, is there, first of all, is there a topic that you want me to cover sooner instead of later? I've got a lot planned, but I don't have an order for it. I also want to know what you think about this 10 minute video format. Would it be more helpful to have a longer video, shorter video? Um, and then finally, is it annoying when I pick up the Z? Um, that feels the most natural to me, but I, I feel like it'd be very hard to uh, pay attention. So I've been mostly trying to keep it down, but I think I'm also angling it up and stuff without noticing. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching and I'd appreciate any feedback that you have.